Now, the former Deputy Chief Justice Dekang Moseneke, who is chairing the IEC briefings on the feasibility of holding local government elections during the COVID-19 pandemic, has confirmed that health experts say that the country could be well into the fourth wave at the election time in October. Now, to look at whether, indeed, the October local elections could well be into the surge, I'm now joined by Dr. Farid Abdullah from the Medical Research Council. Dr. Abdullah, good to have you with us this afternoon. If you could please uh, talk us through the submissions that you made as well as what informed them. Afternoon, Tami, and thank you for uh, inviting us to this conversation. Let me start by saying that it's really a Hobson's choice for the, the deputy, former Deputy Chief Justice to make, to balance, you know, going ahead with an election because democracy is so important to us with um, the risk that um, lives will be put if we proceed. And let me also start by, by saying that, you know, um, there is so much that we don't know about this epidemic um, that, uh, you know, we can't be absolutely certain about these things, but we do have enough information to give us an idea of where, where we're going. So to summarize what we presented to Justice Moseneke yesterday, we said firstly that there, there will be a fourth wave. There is um, very little doubt about that. Um, and that our, in our estimates, looking at the patterns, the wave patterns over the last uh, 18 months, that we expect that that fourth wave will be underway in October. Exactly when in October is a little uncertain. There's a little bit of estimation taking place here, but uh, certainly uh, the wave um, is likely to commence around October, given the the trends that have gone before. Uh, the second thing is that, and, and probably this is the most important thing, is that if you look at the um, history of the epidemic and the first, second and the third waves, you know, you can't only look at the national wave and see the pattern, but you have to look at uh, uh, lower down, at the provincial level, at the local level. And when we presented the trajectory of the epidemic by province, and by metro municipalities, you know, we showed that when some provinces are coming down with their wave, other provinces are going up. And the best example is in this third wave, the Northern Cape is coming down and Gauteng is skyrocketing upwards. You know, we're also starting to see a, a, a peak turning now in the Free State and the Northwest province, uh, but other provinces are going up. So at any one time, there will always be some province or some municipality, um, you know, which will be experiencing an outbreak, which will be in the wave. And so it's hard to look for a sweet spot where no provinces will be in a wave. I think that's what a lot of people are, are looking for, is some kind of sweet spot in the trough where it will be safe to be having an election. And we're saying... Um, you know, the, the sweet spot doesn't exist. So I don't want to go on for too long. I have a few more things to say, but let me stop at that point. And, and, and uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good point to stop, Dr. Abdullah, because I want to ask you about that sweet spot and how we could potentially get to it. Would a mass vaccination help us at least get close to that sweet spot? Because from what you're saying, we really are caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, the, the patterns of the wave, th there's always something happening somewhere. So there's never really an ideal time that mass elections of this nature can take place. But could mass vaccination be part of the solution? Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's really the only solution we have, is if we scale up our vaccination program to the level which uh, President Ramaphosa says he would like to see it at 300,000 vaccinations a day, then we'll start to get on a road where we can talk about an election perhaps next year. Um, you know, and I want to say a word about the vaccination program. I know we've had lots of stops and starts. We've had, um, you know, supply side issues. Um, and we've vaccinated, you know, just under 3 million people now. But we do, uh, uh, you know, need to have... Um, 
a substantial, substantially high number. And the only way to really, you know, um, get to the point where we think it's making a difference is when we see a decline in the mortality. So in the UK at the moment, they're having an upsurge in infections, but because most of their population has been vaccinated, you know, the deaths and the hospital admissions are flat. That's the point we need to get to. And then we can talk about having an election. If we, um, if we consider an election, you know, whilst the whole country or part of the country is um, in a wave, then, and really we'll be fueling, fueling the epidemic with thousands of small super spreader events uh, in the campaigning period. And then on election day itself, it, it could be a huge uh, super spreader event. But to answer your question, you're absolutely right. When we get to the level of um, vaccinating the people who, who need it most, so Professor Muddy talks about 80% of those who are over 60 or, or having comorbidities, you know, that's probably the right number when we get to that point. But there's one other rider here, uh, Tommy, um, and that is that uh, we have to have a flat flattening of the mortality of the death rate for long enough so that we, we can see it's not just a normal trough. It's no, not a normal interwave period, but that when, when the next wave starts going up and we see infections rising, rising and we see this decline. So we're saying that um, we need a sustained decline in mortality and that anything else um, going ahead with an election uh, as things stand is putting thousands of lives at risk.